Good morning. Today's lesson is 11.3. Today we'll be doing the surface area of a prism. So our central question, how can you find the surface area of a prism? Well, you can use a net to find the surface area of a solid figure, such as a prism. Let's unlock the problem. Alex is designing wooden boxes for his books. Each box measures 15 inches by 12 inches by 10 inches. Before he buys wood, he needs to find the surface area of each box. What is the surface area of each box? Use a net to find the surface area. So first of all, what shape? What is the shape of each face? So if I'm looking at each of these faces, well, they're all rectangles. What are the dimensions of each face? Well, we have 15, oops, we have 15 by 12. So this one right here is 15 by 12. The one underneath of it, that one and that one is all 15 by 12. And the two on the ends are 10 by 12. So there are four like this and two like this one. So if you lay the net out, you can see that. There are two that have the 10 by 12, and then there's one, two, oh, actually, slightly different now that I'm looking at it. So this one is actually 10 high and 15, whereas this one is 12 by 15. So actually, there's two that are 12 by 15, two that are 10 by 12, and two that are 10 by 15. So a little bit different, you can see that here. So face A, which is this one right here, they've already written for you, it's 12 by 10. So they've already written 12 by 10, which is 120 inches squared. Now face C is this one right here. So if I look, the same line is shared right there, right? So this is a 12 by, and we need this height line right here. And if I follow this over, I see that that height line is the same as this one on the end, which is 15. So it's 12 by 15. Face E, which is right here, is again 12 by 15. And then face B, which is this one right here, is 10, because I can see the 10. And then it's got the same height right here. If I follow that over, I see that that's 15. Oh, they already did that. They just need the, to do the whole, um, the whole amount out. I'll do that one in just a second. So face D is 10, and then you can see it's by 15. So this is 10 by 15. And then face F is this one right here, and it's 10. And then this line right here, I follow it up here, and it's 12. So this one's 10 by 12. Then when you multiply those out, uh, 12 times 15. Oops. Oh, it's not going to take that away from me. There we go. I fixed it. So 15 times 12 is 180. 15 times 12 is 180 again. And I had it 12 times 15 when I wrote it earlier, but it's the same thing because remember you can do commutative property. Um, this next one is 15 times 10, which is 150. Then you have 15 times uh, 10 again, which is 150. Whoops. And then 12 times 10, which is 120. And then you're going to add all those faces up, which you can see the answer, and sorry for revealing that. But you're going to add up the 120, 180, 180, 150, 150, and 120. And when you add all those numbers up, you're going to get 900 inches square. So the surface area is going to be 900 inches square because you have to add up A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. So if you want to go back here, A was 120. Um, C was 180, E was 180, and D was 150, and this one was 150, and this one was 120. So I basically just took these amounts, wrote them in the squares they belong in, and then you just have to add them all up, and you'll have your surface area. Okay, so the next example is going to be using a net to find the surface area of a triangular prism. So remember that the surface area equals the sum of the areas of the three rectangular faces and the two triangular bases. Note that the bases have the same area. So our bases have the same area. Um, so the area of base A, so we've got base A right here, is one half base times height. Remember when we did our area of a triangle? Because if you cut a rectangle in half, then you get a triangle. So a rectangle is base times height, and then if you cut it in half, you have the triangle. So you have 1 half times 12, so there's my 12, 
times 5. So I'm trying to try and show you one here. So we've got 12 and 5. This is for this one right here. So we have 1 half of 12 times the 5, and then you're going to get 30 when you multiply that out. Because you have, just to make sure you guys remember, so if it's 1 half times 12 times 5, so we put this over here, right? So 12, that's 12 over 2 times 5. Easiest way is to probably put a 1 there, and then you have... Um, I would just go ahead and, and cross this out now. Tw uh, 12, 2 goes into 12 6 times, so this becomes a 6, and you have 6 times 5, which is 30. A little bit easier way to look at it that way. I know I might have just confused some of you. But that's because we have the half, remember, which is kind of like dividing by 2. All right, so the area of face B. So now I'm on face B, which is this one right here. That one's just a rectangle, so that's 10 times 5. 10 times 5 is 50, right? I'll just move that out of the way. It's going to, whoops, it's moving all over the place. Okay, it's 50. Okay, and then face C, face C is this one right here. So there's C, so it's going to be 12, and then it's this line right here. And so if I go over, it's 10, right? So it's 12 times 10. So 12 times 10, and 12 times 10 is 120. The next one is face D, and this one's face D. So again, it's 13 times 10. And 13 times 10 is 130. Whoops, because I kind of already showed you. Sorry about that. Now, your um, triangles, we already said that those were going to be, so you have two, whoops, where are we? You have two that are um, 30. You have two that are 30 because they're right here. Let me show you. Whoops. Sorry about that. So you have two that are, they said the triangles are the same. So triangle A and triangle E are exactly the same because they're 5 by 10. So you have one, two of them. So if you do two times the 30, that's going to give you the surface area of those. And then you have to add these three bases. So I'm going to add my 50 from, base, from the base B. I'm going to add my 120 from um, face C, and then I'm going to add my 130 from face D. And when I add those all together, I end up with 360. So the surface area of this triangular prism is 360. And this says, explain why the area of one triangular base was multiplied by 2. Well, like I said before, that's because the triangle bases are congruent, which means they're equal, so they're the same. All right, our next example is finding the surface area of a cube. Now remember, a cube has the rectangular sides. They're all the same, though. So as soon as you find one of them, you multiply it times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because there are six sides. So it's pretty easy. So all of the face, faces of these squares have this, the length of 5 centimeters. So the area of face 1 is 5 times 5, which is 25 centimeters squared. So find the sum of the areas of all six faces. Then you're going to take the 25, and you're going to add 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. And you're going to need six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, because there are six sides, right? And they are all the same. Once you do that, then you are going to get the answer of 150 centimeters squared. That's probably the easiest one to do. So another way is to use a formula. So you can say the surface area, or S, equals 6S squared. So that's saying 6 of the sides, right? Times whatever, how much one side is um, squared. So if we were to do that, we would say, so one side is 5, right? So then that means in this particular case, we would take so here's, if I plugged in my formula, then this is saying S equals 6, 5 squared. Remember, you're going to do what's in the parentheses first. So this is 5 times 5, which is 25. We did that already, right? 5 times 5 is 25, which leaves you with 6 times the 25, because each of these is 25. I'm writing them all in there so you can have it. 
It's a little easier than adding 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25, right? So that means you're going to get, oops, this is not moving. Move that out of the way. So that means you're going to get um, the 25 there, which I just did, which equals 100, 150 because 6 times 25 is 150 centimeters squared. Okay, there aren't very many problems on this page, so I really don't want to do um, more, but I just want to remind you when you are doing this that base times height, right? So 2 times 2 on a cube. It's the same. All of these are 2 times 2. So when you find one of them, you just have to add it 6 times, okay? On this one, you're going to have to unwrap it because... This top, these two pieces right here are three and a half by four, but these two side pieces here are eight and a half by four, and the other two side pieces are three and a half by eight and a half. So you're essentially on this one, you're going to have two, two, and two. You're going to have two sides that are like this, that are three and a half times four, and then you're going to have these two sides that are three and a half times eight and a half. And then you're gonna have these other two sides that are um, four times eight and a half, right? So you're basically, once you solve this, you're gonna have to multiply it times two, solve this, multiply it times two, solve that, multiply it times two, and then add all those numbers up to get your answer, okay? And then this one is kind of tricky, but the um, the main thing to remember on this is that you have to get the triangle sides and then you have, so when you unfold this, you're going to have two triangles and then you're going to have three rectangles. So you really have to be careful to look. So I kind of want to show you, I'm gonna, maybe I can highlight the lines. So this line right here, it's showing you as 10 centimeters, right? That line right there, it's showing you as 16. So this bottom square right here is 10 by 16. Let me erase that so you can kind of see the next one. You really kind of have to look at the layers. This next layer is 16 by 8. So it's 16 by 8. This one's 16 by 8. And then this one over here is that same 16 but the height on it is six, so 16 by six, okay? And then your triangles are the same. They're eight times six. So you're gonna have two triangles that are six times eight times the half, because remember you have to cut it in half. So you have two of those, and then you have to add this one, this one, and this one to get this answer. So I just kinda wanted to go over how to get the answers, so hopefully you guys will do well on that. Um, I will be on the carpet if you need any more help, and good luck.